More bloodshed in Syria, and now hundreds of thousands of families have been forced from their homes just in the last two or three weeks. Thanks for tuning in for your daily dose. Israel is pledging to provide massive amounts of humanitarian aid and life-saving medical treatment. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad's relentless military campaign in rebel towns near Dara in the southwest show no signs of slowing down. In new developments just within the last hour or so, another round of massive explosions heard there, reportedly at a weapons depot that's used by Iranian troops. Meanwhile, Israeli army commanders, combat soldiers, medics, they have been working nonstop, often in the dead of night, to bring some critically wounded Syrian kids to safety. Our Middle East correspondent, Emily Rose, has been tracking this story for days. She's with me live now in the studio for an update. Emily. Yes, Jeff, I've just returned now from meeting with a very special doctor who's treating a very special patient, a 10-year-old girl who survived an explosion. A building collapsed upon her. She was rushed uh, to the Israeli border. She was treated by IDF medical medical teams on the border and then rushed to Sheba Medical Center in central Israel. We've just received an update on her state, her current state. Let's hear what the doctor had to say. So she suffered what seems to be a blast injury. She has uh, multi um, trauma, multi, multiple systems that are involved. She has uh, significant lung damage and uh, significant brain injury. Um, but she's uh, progressing slowly. But surely, uh, she has a relatively good prognosis. We hope, we hope with the care that she's given here and with some rehabilitation, she would be able to uh, return to a normal uh, life as a child. So that's Dr. Itai Pesach. He's the deputy director of that children's hospital. He gave us a glimpse into how these patients make their way to the border and what happens thus far. Let's have a listen. So uh, Thursday um, in the late evening, we got a call from uh, the Israeli army that there's a critically injured child in uh, Dara in Syria that needs uh, emergent care that is not available uh, in Syria. She was brought uh, near the border by um, the Syrian side um, and uh, special units from the Israeli armed forces uh, approached the border, uh, um, accepted the child gave her uh, life-saving treatment uh, on the ground there and then uh, transferred her to a um, uh, landing strip. Emily, I know you just got back from this interview, but this doctor, he's really working, I mean, around the clock, nonstop to care for these critically hurt kids. But he's just one part of this machine that's working at the border, the transfer process, the hospital process. It's a team to save these kids. Yes, yeah, so and one of the most touching parts was that we heard that when they got that call, the hospital was not fully staffed to be able to facilitate the bringing of these refugees. But staff volunteered to come in that night in order to staff the ward. They came in and they helped this family. As far as we know, the medical system in Syria and in a lot of the parts uh, that are uh, under uh, heavy fighting uh, recently, but this has been for the past few years or, already, uh, don't have any ability to treat uh, complex cases and injured children. Uh, we're not talking just about trauma. We're also talking about other diseases. So we actually had... Uh, kids with cancer came here and we actually had uh, kids with congenital heart uh, malformations that came he here and got uh, surgeries. And back now with our Daily Dose exclusive, that sit-down interview that just wrapped up uh, with our Middle East correspondent Emily Rose speaking about the efforts to save some of these critically wounded Syrian children. This has been going on the war for many years. What's different now, the treatment that's going on now with Israeli doctors? Well, certainly these doctors are readying for an influx of those refugees. As we mentioned, they're flocking towards the border. By the thousands. By the thousands. And now we know that Israel has different groups that are working to uh, take those uh, uh, refugees. Perhaps one of the most touching pieces of this interview, I have to say, was this doctor's personal connection uh, to this case itself and to Syria. Let's have a listen to what he had to say about that. To me, uh, personally, it's a very uh, a special situation. Um, um, my dad um, died during the Yom Kippur War in the Golan Heights fight, fighting in Syria uh, and treating patients coming in for there. Uh, to me, it feels uh, as if I'm closing a circle uh, and, and switching the, the uh, relationship between the nations instead of being uh, nations that fight each other. We are able to lend a hand to each other and, and support human beings where they are. 
I have mean, a fascinating personal story about what drove him to medicine, what drove him to want to help out. And it proves, really, that this is not some faraway conflict for Israel. This is not some distant land in the newspaper. This is at the border. Yes, but I have to mention that I did meet with the mother of this 10-year-old girl. And we spoke very briefly for obvious reasons. She can't appear on camera. But she was very much in shock. She's never seen a medical facility that that's, that's that advanced. Obviously, there isn't such one in Syria. She's in a country that doesn't enjoy, enjoy diplomatic relations with Syria. She had never met Israelis and uh, she was also very much she left half of her family behind so again these countries are very close on the border wise but they're very very far apart in terms of everything else life-saving efforts going on right now excellent work and we thank you so much